Hello and welcome to ESPN Crick Info Weekly. I'm Ronak Kapoor looking back at what the last seven days offered to the cricketing world. And we kick off looking at what's happening in Zimbabwe, where Virat Kohli's new look India have clinched the five match ODI series with two games to spare. And while this tournament may mean different things to different people, one person for whom it couldn't come sooner is Ambati Raidu. At 28, Ambati Raidu may have felt his chances of making the Indian squad were bleak, but the Zimbabwe tour gave him his much needed break. He slammed an unbeaten 63 in the first ODI at Harare, becoming the third oldest Indian batsman to score a 50 on debut, behind Ajit Wadekar and Sabah Karib. It was his IPL performances, however, that took Raidu on the national team's list of probables, and the boy from Hyderabad thanked his IPL side, the Mumbai Indians, for backing him. Definitely my friends, family and especially Mumbai Indians uh, uh, support staff and our Sachin sir and you know, Robin Singh especially, you know, they've helped me a lot. Uh, definitely would like to thank, thank them. His 63 was also the seventh highest score by an Indian on debut in ODIs, the highest being Robin Uthappa's 86 against England in 2006. The list also includes Navjot Sidhu, Ajit Wadekar and Sandeep Patel. Ravindra Jadeja's unbeaten 60 against Sri Lanka in 2009 sees him at 8. After the first ODI, Raidu also spoke of the elation on getting his first Indian cap. I was really, uh, what do you call it, emotional and very happy to be walking in. So I think everything was left aside and I was happy to, you know, just to play the ball there. To England now, and while the Ashes is undoubtedly cricket's most iconic series, it doesn't happen to be the oldest. That honour goes to a land in the far west, Canada. Venu Palaparthi of DreamCricket.com has followed the Otty Cup, and he tells us more about a fixture which dates back to 1844. The Otty Cup is the world's oldest international sporting fixture. It started in 1844 uh, as a match between USA and Canada and uh, it had a fairly continuous run until 1912. It resumed again in 1963 and when it was resurrected in 1963 it was named after K.A. Audi. Carl Andre Otti was an American engineer and cricketer based out of Chicago credited for having played a major role in the revival of cricket in North America. The U.S.-Canada annual tournament, when revived in 1963, was named after him. But that wasn't the only break in the tournament's history. Venu takes us through to the 21st century. Now, between 1963 uh, and 1980, the tournament continued uh, where it left off in 1912. And then went, uh, it took a three-year break and then again was res it resumed between 1983 in 1995, when Sahara Cup came and, uh, you know, the Audi Cup took a long break until 2011. And it's again been held every year since 2011. The tournament has developed in format over the past 169 years and now features one 50-over match and two T20s to complement the two-day game. The latest edition saw Canada sweep the honours on a first innings lead. They also went on to win both T20 matches. Venu says the tournament continues to maintain its relevance in spite of the paucity of international cricket in North America. It's very relevant because, primarily because of its historical significance and also it's, you know, for the same reason, something that has that kind of rich history has the potential to create a tradition, right? So what, what ends up happening is you can weave a good story for sponsors and participants so that they can take pride in this tournament. Well, one tournament that the players derive a lot of pride from is the ICC Cricket World Cup. And after 23 years, Melbourne will once again host the World Cup final in 2015. The ICC Cricket World Cup will be staged in Australia and New Zealand from 14th February to 29th March. Comprising of 14 teams in 44 games, the tournament will be spread over 14 venues. Co-hosts New Zealand play Sri Lanka in the opening fixture at Christchurch, while Sydney and Auckland host semi-finals just as they did in 1992. India opened their title defence against Pakistan in Adelaide, but are also scheduled to play a number of their games in Perth. India's first World Cup winning captain Kapil Dev reacts to the fixtures. What I heard that uh, because of the broadcast, I think, you know, sometime a uh, team want to play somewhere else because uh, they feel comfortable, but uh, I think uh, 
again broadcast to want to make money and everybody wants to make money <laughs> you can't really avoid that uh, uh, i would like to say from indian point of view they like to play in adelaide or melbourne or somewhere the bounce is not so much uh, but yes australia bounce all the time Well, speaking of Perth, Australian legend Dennis Lilly, also the president of the Western Australian Cricket Association, tells us what the tournament means to Australia as co-hosts. Look, I think uh, the World Cup to me from '75 was a, a major event, and it's been that since. Um, to have it in Australia, I think, is phenomenal for the Australian uh, people. Um, you'll have great turnouts. I think it's still a great event. Uh, 2020 is fantastic, but I think the World Cup one day. 50 overs is uh, is a still a great event. Well, the World Cup is still 18 months away and Australia's captain in the first edition Ian Chappell believes this one's going to be hard to predict. I think the way the countries are lined up at the moment there's there's no real clear cut uh, winner. You know, I I think in past tournaments we've you've been able to look at one team, maybe two and say a fair chance one of those two will win it. But I think on this occasion it's it's much more open. and that's probably a good thing for cricket. So, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to a tournament where there's probably going to be some upsets and we might even get a surprise winner. So that's a wrap up on this edition of ESPN Cricket for Weekly. Do log on to espncricketinfo.com for the latest from the world of cricket. Until next time, thank you for watching. Goodbye.